Hey everybody, welcome back to Crazy Dave's Crew. I'm Laura, and you're watching Thursday Threads. This week I want to go back to the basics a little bit. Uh, we've shown you in another video you know, how you can use just your squares, maybe a charm, a charm pack, to make your nine patches. We're going to review that, and then I'm going to show you another technique. So don't go away. So the first method, and I've got a bunch of squares that I have been collecting and uh, my scraps and different things, and this is one way that I, I do enjoy. So I can just take my squares and pick what color I want, and especially if you're doing a scrappy quilt, that may be what you want. Let me show you. So what you'll do is pick the color fabric that you want. And you're just going to sew that seam there. And sew that seam there. And you've got your three. Okay? So just take your squares and you can put them together. And of course you'll want to do three. Three rows, put those together, and you have your nine patch using squares. But here is another method. Let's say you're not doing a scrappy. So if you're wanting to kind of keep some coordination going, you want to use the same fabrics, you want to do a, a different method, or, or maybe you've got enough of the fabric that you want that you can do it this way. So I'm going to have my fabric on my cutting mat. And I need to, I need to even that up. So let's do that real quick. And of course the fold is always going to be a straight line, so I do like to kind of match my fold up on a straight line on the mat. And I'm going to follow this line right here to make sure my edges are nice and even. Just a little bit. I really like this cutter. It's a Fiskars combo. You've got uh, ruler and a cutter. I'm doing five and a half inches on this part. Okay. So you can see there's the five, there's the half inch. So I'm going to use this row right here to cut this first fabric. I'm make sure that that line is right across the top edge. Okay. And we're nice and even. And voila, you have a five and a half inch strip. Okay, now, so I've already got some cut out. I'm going to use black, this nice white on white po polka dot. I'm going to use my Tennessee fabric and more of the white on white. Now, I have learned that it's good to alternate your seams. Now anytime you have a white on white or a cream on white, you want to double check to make sure you've got the right side. And usually when it's like this, the little polka dots will be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to do a UT fabric, a white, and a UT fabric for my top. And I'm just going to pin that. This is known as strip quilting. Uh, now, my mother, she didn't like strip quilting. She was always afraid, you know, you, you don't, uh, when you cut it, your, your thread's not, not tied. I'm always afraid it's going to unravel. But I have learned you're, you're going to be sewing over all those seams, so you are going to be locking it in. All right, so got one done, and I'm going to be sewing, and I'm going to be sewing this way. So now I want to sew the other way, and I'm going to go ahead and put that on here, pin it down. <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> so this one is going this way this one's going to go this way and we're just going to match it up again and pin it down all the way across and then we're just going to do a stitch this way a stitch this way and we'll have it ready so don't go away i will be right back with my strip of orange white and orange all right so i have got my seams down and i'm happy with them now we need to press them remember pressing is not ironing you also want to make sure that you get your seams opened up all the way. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you. So we're going to set the seam. I'm going to want my seam coming towards the orange. So the orange is going to be on top. And I'm just going to kind of press it down. Setting the seam. Okay. Now I'm just going to kind of open it up. Watch your fingers. I'm just going to kind of roll it. Just fully open up that seam. And sometimes they want to go back the other way, but you're in charge. You want that whole seam opened up and you want it going towards the darker of your color. <clears throat> now, however you press it on this one, the next one you're going to do the opposite. You're going to press towards the middle. There. And I want to do the same thing with this side. Open it up. So now we've got a nice flat seam. All right, we are good to go. But this isn't going to make a, a nine patch yet. So we've got a couple more things we need to do. So let's go back to the cutting table. Well, I started off with five and a half inch square. So I'm going to want this to be five and a half inch this way as well. Now you can see my top edge is not entirely even. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of do a uh, five and three quarters this first time around. And you should be able to line up your seam. There should be one, two, three, four, five. Because we took a quarter inch off this side, a quarter inch off this side. Five and a half minus a half inch is five inches. So we're going to kind of go following this, the line on the seam. <laughs> so we're going to line it up at the seams. 
I said, and this first time, I'm going to do like five and three quarters. And I'm going to slice it. Now I'm going to turn it upside down. And now I'm going to do five and a half. That way I'm getting a nice, even edge on both sides. All right, and there we go. And you just keep going until so you've gotten all of the pieces that you want. This time I'm gonna do five and a half inches. Again, I'm gonna use my seam lines as a guide here with the ruler. There's my five and a half inch mark with those little lines. And we're gonna cut. One more. So I'm evening it up. And I'm gonna throw that aside for my, my scrap bin. So we have some strips ready to sew together for our nine patch. All right, you remember how we said on these, we were pressed outward. <clears throat> so on this one, we're gonna press it inward. I like to nest it in this way, from the inside to the out. So, and here comes a trick. So because they are pressed opposite directions, we can nest our seams. It's gonna be nice and flat. And you can actually see right there how it fits in. Okay? Trick. You're not going to use just one pin. You're going to use two. You're going to pin it on the left side of the seam. And you're going to pin it on the right side of the seam. So that it does not slip. I also like to pin it here at the end because I want my squares to be nice and even and I don't like it when this slides down so I'm also going to pin it there. A couple extra pins, a couple extra seconds can mean a lot. I'm going to even this side up just a smidge. That my sides. Well, that's not good. So let's bring it over just a little until we can feel it butt into the other seam. And again, holding it nice and tight, feeling it nice and flat. Pin it on the left side of that seam and on the right side of the seam. And again, I am going to pin this right in the center. I'm going to go ahead and pin the other side. Bigger squares like this, I am very comfortable going ahead and getting both sides pinned down. That's kind of what it's going to look like. And I'm going to do the other one. Now you do not have to do both side, both uh, all three of these at the same time. It's just the way I do it. Uh, I don't know the quote unquote correct way. I am showing you what I do. What works for me and what works for me may not work for you. So you may have to find your own method. 
and that's perfectly all right. In a way, it doesn't matter how you get there as long as you get there and you're having fun. <clears throat> so we're going to take this to the machine. We're going to sew it down, and I'll be right back. So we're over here at the sewing machine, and I kind of want to show you how I do it. <clears throat> so I am using my piecing foot. And I've got my needle right in the middle. That's going to give me a nice quarter inch seam. And you do not want to run your needle over your pins. But you can leave it pinned and still sew. So I'm going to show you something here. So do you see the pin right there? And you see how it's sliding and you can see it in this little guide hole of your foot. Don't want that. Don't want that. Don't want that. Oh, there you go. That's what you want. Keeping it pinned, but not where the needle's gonna get it. You could break the needle. You could scratch up your bobbin case. Um, both of those things will make it difficult to, to sew. Um, and I always keep an extra bobbin casing on hand because it is a whole lot cheaper for me to switch out my bobbin casing than for me to take her into uh, the sewing machine shop. Because this is also a combination embroidery machine, sewing machine. And to take this in for maintenance, it's over $100. So whatever I can do here at home, I do. I get these from Amazon. Um, search for your, your machine, your model, and bobbin case. I am not running over my pen. And we're going to go slow and steady. I'm going to go ahead and move this one out of the way. Again, I'm going to pull this out of the way of that little guide. I'm going to feel it. Yep, it's still nice and flat. And now I'm going to pull these out of the way. Okay, down to the next seam. I'm going to pull my pins out of the path of the needle. It's still nice and flat. I had to learn the hard way also by having the pins in there with the needle it can grab and it will you know just skew that fabric and you will not have nice corners, nice points. And I am all right with it taking me a little bit longer to get it done because I am more satisfied with the results. And I'm going to kind of hold on to my edge here. Again, I want it to be nice and even. And that's done. So let's do the other side. And we will review. All right, so again, everything's nice and even. I don't want my pin in the way of my needle. Fingernails are a good thing for just scooching your fabric a little bit. And then we're going to sew it down. And you can kind of pull it up right here, and you can see if you're still on target. You can feel to feel it. You're going to feel the pin right there. So don't push this way. You'll stab yourself. Go straight down, and you can tell if it's still flat or if it's bumpy. 
you want it to be nice and flat. Pull the pins out from the needle path. Coming up again. So I'm going to kind of take a quick peek. Yep, we're still good. We're still flat. Let's get over this hump right here. Feel it again. Good. Oh, this needle's in the path, so I need to move that just a little bit more. Now it's out of the path. Pull that one because I am going to again use my fingernails to kind of scooch it nice and even. Et voila! Let's take a look at it. Right. So I'm actually real pleased with this. My corners are nice, on point. And now this is ready for whatever next step you have planned. Okay. Don't forget to press. Um, now, what if you're wanting a scrappy? Well, again, you just do one to one to one, one to one to one, one to one to one. Sew your three strips together. Same method. Okay. Oh, I didn't get that one pressed out. Nice. You can see that right there? That's because I didn't get it pressed good. I didn't get that seam nice and open. So let's fix that. Okay, so you see it's kind of folding open. I'm just going to take my iron and I am just going to kind of roll it lightly there. And then I'm going to press it and press press. Oh, that one's a little bit there too, so let's, and you can hang, hang onto the fabric and kind of pull just a little bit. Now take a look at that. It's a lot better, isn't it? So I also want to show you the difference in size. So this was a four and a half inch squares that I had cut in my scrap basket. This is my five and a half inch block. Five and a half inch squares. And I could do this by block by block or I could do it by strip quilting. You've got a jelly roll. Two and a half inches. Same methodology. But one difference. How, how big are you gonna make your cuts this way? That's right, two and a half inches. So these are going to be two and a half inch going on down. And then you can put these together and make a coordinated block. And your choice, which is on top, which is in the you know middle, and which is on the bottom. But that is... Two methods for making a nine patch. You can do it scrappy with individual blocks, like that one. You can do it coordinated with strips or by using your blocks. That's entirely up to you, whatever you feel more comfortable with. But there we go. Back to the basics. Your basic nine patch using blocks, using strips. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope you have found it helpful and maybe I've even inspired. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook at Crazy Dave's Crew and also Sewing and Crocheting for Beginners. We'd love to have you. We would love to see pictures of what you're working on. Let me know uh, 
I, I love hearing that I've been able to help somebody. I love hearing that, uh, you know, I think that's why I became an elementary school teacher many, many, many years ago, is I loved seeing the light bulb go off and going, oh, yeah, that's easy. Um, it just tickles me no end. So don't forget to subscribe. We've got the button right down here. And uh, don't forget to come back to Crazy Dave's Crew and Thursday Threads. Have a great week.